Today, we tackle two of the deepest questions humanity has ever asked. What is consciousness? And do we truly have free will? In a world dominated by technology and an often materialistic view of reality, today we hear a different voice, a highly authoritative voice coming directly from the heart of Silicon Valley, but with deep roots in science and human experience. We are talking about Federico Fagan. For those unfamiliar with him, Fagan is not just a physicist. He is the inventor who literally shaped our digital world. He led the project for the world's first microprocessor, the Intel 4004, developed the technology that enabled the creation of digital camera sensors and co-founded the company that developed the first touchpads and touchscreens, a technology giant. Yet this man, after reaching the pinnacle of success, turned his genius inward towards the greatest mystery, consciousness. Today, I bring you the account of an incredible interview Fagan gave to the Essentia Foundation channel, an interview I commented for you and which completely overturns the traditional view of reality. Get ready, because the ideas you will hear are as radical as they are fascinating. Before we begin, if you love exploring the frontiers of knowledge and enjoy these in-depth analyses, I ask for a small but significant favor. Subscribe to the channel and activate the bell. So where does Fagan's revolution begin? Not from a laboratory, not from an equation, but from a profound personal experience. As he himself recounts in the interview, in 1990, despite having everything the world defines as success, he felt like he was dying inside. He was unhappy. This suffering led him to ask the fundamental question, what is consciousness? And the answer came one night during the Christmas holidays in Lake Tahoe. Fagan describes a mystical experience, an explosion of love and light that erupted from his chest. In that instant, his consciousness expanded beyond his body and he had an epiphany. I am that thing. I am the observer and the observed simultaneously. He understood that everything that exists is made of that same conscious substance. Let's pause for a second. It's crazy. A materialistic physicist, the architect of the computer world, has an experience that seems straight out of an Eastern philosophy text. But that's precisely what makes his journey unique. He didn't dismiss the experience as a hallucination. On the contrary, he spent the next 30 years trying to study and understand it scientifically. And here we come to the core of his theory, developed together with Italian physicist Giacomo Mauro Dariano. Fagan proposes a worldview he calls informational quantum panpsychism. The central idea, as he explains in the interview, is this. Consciousness is not a product of the brain. It's not something that emerges from the complexity of neurons. On the contrary, consciousness is fundamental, an intrinsic property of reality, just like space and time. And our body? Here Fagan uses a powerful metaphor. Imagine, he says, controlling a drone remotely. The drone is in a distant reality. It sends you images, and you, from your location, have the conscious experience of what the drone is seeing. Your consciousness is not in the drone. The drone is just a vehicle, an avatar. Well, for Fagan, our body works similarly, an incredibly complex quantum classical machine that is piloted by our true essence. P, this essence is a conscious quantum field that is not located in space-time. Rather, space-time exists within these fields. Do you understand the scope of this statement? If Fagan is right, we are not our body. We use a body. And when the body dies, just like when the drone is shot down, our consciousness does not die with it. It simply stops receiving information from that avatar and awakens to a broader reality. This, says Fagan, would explain near-death experiences. But a critic might say, okay, nice theory, but why should a living organism be different from a computer? In the end, both use particles, electrons, signals. Fagan, as the inventor of the microprocessor, 
answers with disarming clarity. A microprocessor, he explains, is made of switches, on, off, zeros, and ones. A single transistor knows nothing about the computer as a whole. It's a classical system where each part is separate. A living cell, on the other hand, is a quantum and classical system together and contains the complete genome of the organism. Every part has knowledge of the whole. We are holographic. The particles inside a cell are not simple bouncing marbles, but as quantum physics states, they are states of a field, inseparable from the field itself. And that field, for Fagan, is conscious and has free will. The decision is not in the cell, but in the field that controls the cell. His theory, therefore, not only gives a fundamental role to consciousness, but also solves one of the greatest mysteries of science, the interpretation of quantum mechanics. According to Fagan, quantum information, the qubit, is the mathematical representation of inner experience, of qualia, meaning our sensations. And the famous and mysterious collapse of the wave function? It's not a random event. As he literally says, it's a decision of free will of the field. This is an explosive point. For a century, physicists have puzzled over why a single classical reality emerges from a world of quantum probabilities. Fagan says, the choice is not random, it's an act of will. And this will is not only ours, but in every quantum field, down to the field of electrons. The universe is not a deterministic machine, but an infinite interaction of wills. And here the theory becomes even grander. Why should the universe be this way? Fagan starts from a postulate that unites science and spirituality. The totality of what exists wants to know itself. To know itself, it must create innumerable points of view, perspectives from which to observe itself. These perspectives are us, the sits. We are not copies, but part holes of a single infinite consciousness experiencing itself through us. This, according to Fagan, changes everything. It shifts the paradigm from competition, survival of the fittest, to cooperation. If we are all expressions of the same consciousness, the only sensible game is to help each other grow and understand. And artificial intelligence? Fagan is clear. AI can be a very useful tool, but it will never be conscious. Because creativity, understanding, meaning are not algorithmic. They are not calculable. Meaning exists only in the field, in inner experience. The idea that machines will surpass us is a self-fulfilling prophecy that leads us to believe we are machines ourselves. Finally, the interviewer asks him, but is this theory testable, falsifiable? And Fagan, with a confidence that leaves one stunned, replies, of course it is. And I will do an experiment to demonstrate that trees are conscious. If he succeeds, he will prove that consciousness does not need a brain, overturning one of the dogmas of modern biology. So, what does this incredible interview with Federico Fagan leave us with? It leaves us with a radically different worldview, a vision in which we are not biochemical machines born by chance in a meaningless universe, but conscious, immortal entities connected to everything that exists, participating in a cosmic process of self-knowledge. Fagan tells us that science, to progress, must stop ignoring the inner world, experience. It must instead unite the world of the objective with that of the subjective. And as Nikola Tesla quoted in the interview said, the day science begins to study non-physical phenomena, it will make more progress in one decade than in all the previous centuries of its existence. Fagan's ideas are bold, visionary, for some perhaps crazy, but sometimes it's the crazy ideas that are closest to the truth and they are proposed not by some ordinary dreamer, but by one of the architects of our present. And this, whether one believes it or not, must make us reflect deeply. I hope this journey into the mind of Federico Fagan has fascinated you as much as it has fascinated me. What do you think?
Is the universe a machine or a conscious entity? Let me know in the comments. Let's discuss it together. If you like the video, leave a like and share it. It would help the channel immensely to reach other curious minds. Thank you for being with me. See you on the next journey at the frontiers of science.